I'm still not good with authority. My parents raised me without authority. I went to 14 different schools. I got kicked out everywhere. Um, and then finding entrepreneurship where I can do what I want to do with whom I want to do uh, was, was the perfect fit for me. Hello, Amapreneurs, and welcome to today's episode of Amapreneurship, your guide to a healthier and happier and truer entrepreneurial path. Today is uh, extra special because we're diving into the core of what we're all seeking, happiness. As entrepreneurs, we pour endless hours into our ventures and financial planning and constantly striving for improvement. But we, we often neglecting our personal lives in the process. Uh, I speak about this from experience that sometimes work can overwhelm you so much that, uh, yeah, you forget you have children or a husband. <laughs> and <laughs> Oh, yes. That's exactly why we're tr thrilled to have David Hazel here, the founder of Managing Happiness, the platform that helps you to discover who you are and to design the life you want to lead. David, we are so grateful you could join us from both of us. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having, thank you for having me. Excited to be here. And yes, absolutely. As an entrepreneur, I used to be a one trick pony only focusing on work, 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 and hoping that magically my health, my relationships, the relationship with my wife just magically happens. And uh, yeah, I discovered this the hard way. Uh, one day I come home from a meeting about roles and responsibilities and I was sitting on the couch being really tired and I saw that uh, my daughter had a full diaper or our daughter had a full diaper. And I said, hey, honey, look, Emma has a full diaper. And my wife got really upset because she thought I'm telling her to change the diaper, which was not my intention. And I thought, why do we fight about this now? Uh, and then I realized we never had the sit down and talked about the roles and responsibilities that we have in our personal life. And this was the, the starting point of managing happiness when we realized that doing that removed 80% of the friction that we had. And then we invited other business elements into our personal life. And we started running our life the same way you run a successful business. And this has been working pretty well. <laughs> And how your entrepreneur journey actually started? When was that time when you felt overwhelmed that you, you've you been at this current point when you're entrepreneur in the way that most people see the entrepreneurship, like hustling all the time, working all the time, not having time for your um, spouse or your children, etc. Well, entrepreneurship started for me because I was kind of lost. I didn't know what to do with my life. And um, a friend of mine said like, hey man, how about we start a business together? You go with computers, uh, let's give it a shot. And I said like, yeah, I have nothing going on, let's do this. And then I found uh, entrepreneurship, which was like, you know, the, the light at the end of the tunnel because I was not really good. I'm still not good with authority. My parents raised me without authority. I went to 14 different schools. I got kicked out everywhere. Um, and then finding entrepreneurship where I can do what I want to do with whom I want to do uh, was was the perfect fit for me. Oh, That's oh. amazing. <laughs> I love the fighting the authority part. <laughs> so actually my kids will become something at the end of the day, I guess. <laughs> I don't need to teach them uh, that <laughs> teacher is the most respected uh, person in the room. You know, I, I went through, for those of you with children, I mean, I guess it could have gone the other way as well. Uh, I smoked a pack of cigarettes a day when I was 12 already. I drank hard liquor around the same time. When I turned 15, I started smoking weed every day, like till I was 19, like 20 joints a day type of thing. It was pretty intense. So I had a very wild teenage time, but somehow it turned out, turned out okay. Wow. I think <laughs> this amazing. is... 
every Balkan's child teenager years like <laughs> <laughs> isn't it <laughs> and how did you go from uh, from that to the person you're now I mean so <clears throat> personal development I fall I oh, I can't remember what the first I think the first quote unquote personal development or sense seeking book was The Alchemist I think I read when I was a 19 or 20 or so and then I became obsessed with personal development kind of working on myself and it's been been a long process I've you know I've been a I'm a recovering introvert. I used to be super introverted to the point that I didn't want to be on uh, a conference call with a customer because I felt weird or I didn't want to have a meeting with my own team. And this was holding me back massively in life and in business. <clears throat> and a friend of mine was keynote speaking and he was networking like a crazy person. I saw how, how good this was for his business and how much fun he had. And I thought, huh, I want this too, but how do you do this being an introverted computer nerd? And so the Toastmasters twice a week. Do you know Toastmasters? Yeah. Yeah, it's like personal dev- a personal speaking a speaking club, I guess. How to learn how to public speak, and this was really painful. But I did it twice a week, and I went twice a week to networking events, and I talked to everybody and their mother, even though it was terribly, it was terrifying. It was it was really uncomfortable. But it got better. But the real transformation happened when my yoga teacher said that every decision in life is either you make out of love or out of fear. And once I realized this, you know, it everything became much easier. For example, being on the podcast here now or public speaking. Before, I always thought, do people think what I'm saying is stupid? Will I mess up? Will I trip? Do they think I look weird? Do they think I have a weird German accent? And then I was full with fear and I couldn't present, but switching it around and acting out of love and thinking what I'm sharing here can help them in their life and their business or in their entrepreneurial journey. And then it becomes fairly easy to do that because I'm doing it for others and doing it with love. And this was, I think, one of the biggest changes that happened in my life. That's amazing. And this out of love, <clears throat> it, it's also connected with your, with your personal values, right? When I took the course, managing happiness, uh, I realized how important it is uh, the way you presented it to us to go back to your values in no matter what you do, even a simple, even a simple project that you're joining, running it past your values, does it correspond to my values? And, uh, or if not, you just move on. So mm-hmm. that's how we actually started with Leah, this project here. Uh, we were brainstorming, what can we do together? And uh, I actually gave her the prompt that you had from, uh, from OpenAI to develop your personal values. And, and then we saw, okay, which values do we have in common? Where do we intersect? And, and this whole idea of entrepreneurship was born out of that, it was born out of love. <laughs> uh, and <laughs> and the same thing with us, there was a lot of fear recording the first podcasts. They were live with video. We did five episodes all in once. Uh, and we acted out of love and, uh, and being true to our personal values. I hope you still are. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we need to revisit the values every day, every day because we forget life takes you in a direction and, uh, and you lose track. What How I started, do you do it? <clears throat> what I started doing, and I took this from uh, my business partner, Merit, who retook the Managing Happiness course, and he started writing down his core values every morning in a book, you know, every time again and again and again. And he said it became so second nature, every decision that he makes now he runs first through his values or when he's doing something, you know, is he really doing it with the way he would would like to do it, you know. Um, and I started doing this as well, and this was really helpful to, it really helped me to refine my core values. And I used to have more, now I have only six, and then, like they're, they're just like way more refined because this exercise helped me to, yeah, to, to, to work on this, them and to, to put them into shape. This reminds me of this book, Essentialism, I don't know if you read this book. Mm-hmm. It's a great one. And the way that you said it, like write your personal values every day. So everything that you do, you're doing it 
because of your values and out of your values and based on them. Like it's the same way you're doing only the essential things for yourself, the things that you feel that important for you and not for everyone else to please them. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep, absolutely. Because I had a really hard time. I still have a hard time to say no. But if I, you know, run it through my filter, my core values or my mission and vision and the most important areas of my life, me, myself, um, me as the family person and um, in business, the things that I start or the things that I say yes to should be in line with these things. Otherwise, you know, it's, it's not actually my, I have a new core value, which is first things first health and family first. If it's not a fuck yes, it's a no. Um, to, you know, to kind of really make the point of only really doing essential things. I'll, I'll definitely check out the book. <laughs> That's awesome. And can, can you tell us more about this uh, wonderful platform, Managing Happiness? Sure. Um, as, as I already shared, the main thing is to run your life the same way you would run a successful business and find the balance between the business, which is so front and center for most entrepreneurs, but then also you yourself, mind, body, spirit, and then the people around you, you know, family and your community, and to define the vision and mission and the goals that you have in all of those. Um, so the idea is like to really find out what you want out of life and not what your parents want or what society tells you to kind of really sit down and think like, what do, what do you want? You know, because most people just keep up with the Joneses. Uh, one... Mm -hmm. One managing happiness participant, when we did the vision board exercise, he put a, a supercar, you know, McLaren or whatever, he put it in, in, in the center of his vision board. And a few weeks in, he said, like, I don't know why I put this there. I don't even like cars, you know, kind of like having, <laughs> just, you know, kind of like the, it's like, you know, this is how you should, should be, you know, kind of buy things to impress people you don't like. Um, so, yeah, it's kind of like really finding out what you really want out of life. And then giving you the tools to actually achieve it by, you know, drilling in your habits. Because I think your habits determine everything in your life. If you're rich or poor, happy or unhappy, obese or in shape, it all boils down to which habits you, you cultivate. Um, and also making your 90-day plans. Kind of really break it down to what you want to focus on and have a community of people that holds you accountable. Because we're social animals and, you know, positive peer pressure as negative peer pressure is a real thing. So if you surround yourself with the right people, and you share with them what you want to accomplish and you hold each other accountable to those things, magic happens. And this, I guess, is what magic happens is about. It really does work. It, it gives you so much structure into, into that, to be able to discover in the long run, where do you see yourself and, and how you can manage that in a structured way to get there. Um, about the the people that hold you accountable, do you advise that after the course you continue working with with people that are holding you accountable on a on a absolutely basis? absolutely yes. we, we we do accountability groups in in the in the program, um, and actually we're we're adding new services to managing happiness right now, where we have um, uh, get stuff done calls. So a few times a week, there's calls where you can join. You can eat the frog in case you're familiar with the concept of eating the frog, doing the thing you really don't want to do yeah. and just like getting it over with and having the, this, this accountability. And we're also working on a new app, a mobile app. So it's easier to share this with your accountability group. What are the three things you want to do this week for yourself, for your business and for, um, for family? Um, and then at the end of the week, rate yourself, how did you do? and do this in with, with your peer group. So yeah, absolutely. It's, it's important to um, be in contact with your accountability group. Yeah, don't drop yeah. that. And, and those things are important as a, as a solopreneur or as an entrepreneur in general. You often think, oh, I don't have time for that. You know, it's, uh, I'm busy enough. My work is, uh, it's already enough. But if you actually uh, plan this and you make time for, for working on yourself, everything else will work better. Your family will be better. Your business will be better. I know this from experience. And sometimes you think it's overwhelming, but once you start seeing the results, uh, it's unbelievable. I put a few things on that vision board, I remember, and I worked towards them. 
and and now they're happening. Uh, it's it's unbelievable. Yeah, it's still how, a little uh, but but it 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 it, it works. You know? yeah, also for me, I was I used to feel bad when I went to the gym because I felt like eh, I have so much stuff to do. I should rather be in the office. But realizing that when I take care of myself, when I go for runs, when I work out my mind becomes way sharper and I just make, make better decisions. And, you know, and at, at, at the essence, it's like making the right decisions first, you know, cause otherwise you, you know, you run, you maybe run with a lot of effort into the wrong direction. You know, in, in German, you say, uh, I guess, you know, let's just say it measure, measure twice, cut once. So it makes sense. <laughs> we have like, it in you know, Bulgarian as well. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, I think many people don't realize that uh, you unlock your creativity when you do other things except your work. Like if you work out, if you go for a walk, if you just spend some time on hobbies, we talked about in one of our previous episodes. This is the moment when your mind is becoming so much more creative because he's losing all of those borders that the work is putting you in this small box that you're putting in yeah, what, what you can also what my coach recommended to me and to some degree it actually works when you think about the things you want to solve before you go to bed and the subconscious is processing it then you know good ideas come out but yeah absolutely it makes sense to get a little distant otherwise you may not see the the forest from trees. It's also translated by German. No, 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 it works. You know, you can't be too close to it. And David, who is your coach? My coach is Dan LeFave. He's like an, an accountability coach, a really great guy. I think it's lefavecoaching.com. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. And how often do you meet with your coach? I meet with him once a week for 90 minutes. Wow. And we, you know, it's, it's often, it's just kind of talking all the things that are going on in, in my life, you know, like, or, or the, the tasks that I have and kind of like running them through my filters with him and see like what is really essential to do now and what is just noise. Cause I have the shiny object syndrome. I suffer from a lot, you know, like, oh, do this, do this, do this, you know, like more and more tasks, more and more projects, more and more companies. And, you know, kind of taking a step back and really only focusing on the thing that matters. So end of the day, if you have a you know, if you have a magnifying glass, you can burn a hole into the table when you really focus the sunlight on one spot. <laughs> but if you if you move it around, you won't even warm up the surface. So and having you know somebody uh, that helps you doing that, I, th I think everybody you know every top athlete needs needs a coach to really be on top of the game. And it's the same with, with with business or with life. You know, it's good to have somebody who kicks your butt and holds you accountable. Every high performance individual needs a coach. Yep. I agree. And coach is different than uh, than mentor. Mm -hmm. Coach gets you going, uh, and yeah, it it d does he help you come up with your own uh, conclusions? Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, that's that's essentially what a coach does. You know, to to ask the right questions or to guide you in directions that you kind of find decisions yourself. Because you know, he's he's not an expert in the fields that I'm in. Yes. So, uh, you know, on the other hand, a, a mentor, you know, he has been there and done that, like in an industry that, that you are currently in. And you can say, like, you know, no, don't do this, do this, you know, but coaching or also in the O, it's like just sharing from experience or asking questions to make you think and not, not making decisions for you. So, how can you say that? Um managing happiness influenced uh, your own views as an entrepreneur uh, and and your own well-being i mean it i guess managing happiness itself is an accumulation of tools and crutches that i found to be the person that i want to be you know to be the husband that i want to be to be in the shape that i want to be in to be reach the goals that i set myself as as an entrepreneur um, I think starting out always like with the why, when my wife went through breast cancer the first time, mm -hmm. it was a big wake up moment for myself where in, I imagined myself on my deathbed, looking back at my life, thinking, did I really do what I was supposed to do? Did I have the impact I want to have? 
And this brought me a lot of clarity. And we also do this imagining happiness to funeral exercise where you write your own eulogy to kind of reflect on like, you know, at, you know, begin with the end in mind. How should me as the end product look? And then working backwards, what do I want to do to reach that? Yeah, this is very powerful. And would you say uh, the target audience, the, the people who this is made for, would you say it's more uh, solopreneurs or would you say it's, it's people from corporate or it can be students? How would you, how would you say the target audience is for, for this course? I mean, it's pretty broad. We did it with the Rotterdam School of Management. Uh, they, they have it as part of their curriculum now. And it was very beneficial for the students to, to think about what they really want out of life, you know, because they're about to jump into quote unquote real life after their school is done. Um, I think it works best for people who have some business context. You know, because we talk about business tools being applied to, to your personal life. And if you've seen like how, how powerful core values in the company are or how powerful it is to make a 90 day plan in business, it, it's easy to relate to it, but technically everybody could do it. Uh, but I think if you have a business background, it's, it's a little easier. Yeah. It's fantastic to do this when you just graduated. It gives you, it gives you such, such a great start in life. We, many people graduate and they're wondering, you know, where do I go? And, and then they realize it's been 10 years, they've been on the wrong spot and they need to change career and change course. Uh, but having this at the beginning, it's amazing. It's fantastic you're doing this with universities as well. It's very rewarding too. We just met with some of the uh, alumni in, in Amsterdam. And it was really cool to get the feedback from them, like what they what their takeaways were. And also something was cool, they said that because of the course, because you get really get close with the people in the course, doing the um, the lifeline exercise, for example. This was the first time that they really deeply connected with their their, their fellow, how do you call it, like fellow students. Yeah. Um it's you know to me it's kind of sad to see the the lonely people in crowded rooms effect, mm -hmm. you know, but you know, with, with, with the course and these exercises and they actually really connected and clicked, which yeah, made me happy. That's amazing because in, in the day we live in, we are much more connected, but also much more disconnected. So courses like this really bring you together. Yes. We're, we're very connected with social media, but it's all surface level. Like, yeah. Or it's like, you know, I'm so happy, you know, and this is using five filters, you know, but it depends yeah. if it's TikTok, it's more rough. It's real. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's real. Look at me and look at all my failures. I'm so silly. <laughs> <laughs> I understand TikTok. I don't know. I haven't looked into it in a while. Yeah. That's why I love this social media because it makes me happy. And we're talking about happiness right now. It's real. Um, so David, what would you, if you can invite our audience, uh, to join anything, what would it be? I mean, I'll definitely invite you to think about the concept of love and fear. And if you can, if you're making the decisions that you're making in life out of love or out of fear, for me, this was be, was incredibly helpful. For example, selling as an, as an entrepreneur selling, I always sold out of fear because we're a startup, we have to sell or we die. But if I sell out of love, if I know that this product that I'm having here is a good solution for you, I can even be a pushy sales guy. You know, before I felt like a used car salesman, but now I, I feel like, hey, I have like the, you know, the, the cure for you. I'm a doctor and I'm giving you the cure. I can improve your life. And people will feel where you're coming from if you're just doing this because you're generally excited about helping them to succeed versus just filling your pockets. And so sales became way easier for me. And of course, I also want to invite you to join Managing Happiness. You can go to managinghappiness.com. We have a free habit tracker with a mini course there, or you can also join one of our cohorts with one with me on April 8th and uh, May 14th. So in case you want to join. I encourage everybody to join. I've been there and it's fantastic. So we'll uh, share some more information on our platform. So thank you so much. Thank Beautiful. you for joining. Thank you for having me. 
Thank you for sharing your experience also, because I think it's very important when someone shares his personal story and his personal experience, it's more likely for people to find themselves in you and Mm -hmm. to know that they can do it because you did it. So it's very beautiful, I think. Yeah, sharing from experience is in in EO, um, it is where Jan and I were, were connected from. The idea is that you always, you don't give advice, you just share from experience because people don't want to be told what to do, but they like to learn and, you know, peer learning. This is also why the groups, the Magic Happiness groups are so powerful. Not, you know, it's not only about the, the guide who's leading the, the group, but, you know, if somebody has a problem, maybe somebody in the group had a similar problem and they can share from their experience and that's where the magic yeah. happens. That's the best. That's how we also recorded our podcast, sharing from our own experience. And uh, yeah, we're getting great feedback. Beautiful. David, awesome. thank you for thank joining you so us. Much. Thank it you for having me. It was amazing having you. Namaste. Namaste.